close your eyes and pull like that. <laughs> And a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Oh, Christy Cooney hands over the Sam McGuire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome to the Star Sport Podcast. My name is Jack McCarran of the Southern Star and I'm joined as always by Star Sport Editor Kieran McCarty. As is the case with the rest of the country, we are recording this podcast in slightly different circumstances. Both Kieran and I are working from home, so please bear with us if there are any technical difficulties. We will do our best. On today's show, we're going to be looking ahead to the 2020 Southern Star Coastal Schools Regatta, which takes place on May 24th. And we'll also hear from local hurler David Lowney, who was part of the recent UCC Fitzgibbon Cup winning side. He was at the Celtic Ross Hotel last week to pick up his West Cork Sports Star monthly award for January. But Kieran, we have to start, of course, with the coronavirus and the effect it's been having on the lives of people across the country, the lives of just average people, the lives of athletes, the lives of pretty much everyone have been affected by the coronavirus. I just want to start by asking how how you've been how you've been handling it personally. Obviously you have young kids, you're at home, they're off school. What have you been doing to, to keep the train on the tracks, I suppose? I'm actually delighted to be working again today, Jack, because I get to I suppose lock myself away from the kids. So this is actually my this is my downtime. Like I think all parents are in the same boat with, with, with kids off at the moment, trying to keep them entertained. Um, it's fine for the first couple of days and the first week or so, I would think, because it's a novelty, but we just don't know how long this is going to go on. So, um, yeah, interesting times for everyone. Um, we created a new game at home the weekend called Basketball, where we were throwing different ties into a pink basket. Um, I did lose the inaugural game at Basketball, but it just you just have to be, I suppose, just to keep the kids entertained at the moment. Um, because the social distancing is so important. Um, we depend on home and grandparents to, to mind the kids, and obviously that's out of the question at the moment. So it's just about being flexible and um, just trying to stay, stay safe during this period. And could you maybe tell us a little bit more about this fantastic new game, basketball, that you've created? Maybe some of the parents out there listening will be able to take some inspiration from you because I see in the pictures you were posting on social media there was quite a lot of thought gone into it and there was uh, some stringent rules I assume there were some arguments involved as well there was the arguments were for me because I lost the first game to uh, a nine year old which didn't go down too well for me but um, basically it's a pink basket and you throw ties into it from a distance and the different ties are worth different points so um, I will take full credit for the point system and we three little pigs and they're so you're, you're going to points. steal credit for the point system from nine, nine year olds you're going to make that claim 100 percent, 100 percent. because when this game goes global and i have huge aspirations and hopes for it kind of maybe i'd be able to retire off the back of it um but yeah kind of the different ties are worth different different points but i kind of i lasted on the orange circle that's what i lasted on i missed that one Callum got it and it was game over from there so um but it's all about having a bit of fun at the moment you know kind of just keeping them entertained because um you can do your walks and your cycles and so on but they're not getting to school to, to meet with their friends and basketball is cancelled and GA hasn't started yet so um and there's only so much TV you can watch as well so it's just um it's just about keeping them entertained at the moment but I don't know how long it can last before the fight start well maybe just based on all the live sport that's should be on television at this time of year being cancelled as well a potential facebook live stream angle there for basketball live from the home of sports editor kieran mccarty i think that could actually be on the cards because there will be a bit of tension to the rematch because i was defeated and i have taken it quite badly so there'll be a bit of needle and a bit of tension there so um watch social media for updates jack okay well we leave kieran's new newly formed game basketball there we might revisit it next week and the week after that and the week after that and the week after that because as it stands no one really knows when normality is going to kick back in but let's just move towards the effects it's been having the coronavirus crisis has been having on west cork athletes who we've been following closely over the years and um, for some of them this was possibly going to be the biggest year of their career with the 2020 olympics on the horizon now that looks to be in some doubt as well the japanese prime minister made comments over the weekend saying it will definitely go ahead. I don't think anyone can say anything is definite. 
at the current time but the one I want to start with is obviously Phil Healy the Balanine Bullet we obviously follow her very closely at the Southern Star and she has had a marvellous kind of six months breaking Irish records just constantly improving looked like she was going to be peaking at the perfect time for the Olympics but obviously everything's on hold now <laughs> How, how's Phil and what do we know about where she's at at the minute uh, I suppose Phil is like the rest of the Irish athletes at the moment Jack they're kind of they're, they're training as if the Olympics are going ahead but they're, they face just a, an uncertainty um, they're waiting to hear what's going to happen Phil at the moment she's living on, in a, an isolation training camp she's called it she's removed herself from Waterford where she was living in a house with five others and she's now living on her own in a cottage um, near Curraclough Beach in, in Wexford so she's training away there Phil and her coach, Shane McCormack, they filled the house with, with what equipment she needs. So there's there's a bike on in there, there's um, there's weights and so on. So Phil is training away as normal. She's um, The beach is only 150 metres away from her. There's forest trails around there. So it's it's training as as normal as can be. Um, Phil is still targeting, well, hoping that the Olympics are on in the summer. She hasn't qualified per se just yet but she's as good as they are she's ranked 27th in the world at the moment and the top 56 go to the Olympics so she's 99.9% there but it's just a matter of what happens with the Olympics now um, she could do no more but do what she's doing at the moment keep training with that target in mind but she's, I was chatting to her on Friday she's just waiting to hear what's going to happen and I think there's a meeting on Tuesday um, with the IOC so it might become a bit clearer after that so um, it's the same with all the Olympic athletes at the moment Jack yeah, well, let's, as you say, stick with the Olympic angle for now then. Obviously, the big Skibbereen interest and West Cork interest is the rowers. I saw over the weekend that a rowing World Cup and one of the big regattas has, has been cancelled. You may be, be able to give us some more details about that and how it affects the rowers that row out of Skibbereen Rowing Club. If we go back to last week, it was the middle of last week, um, the first two rowing World Cup regattas were cancelled. Um, they were both meant to be in Italy, so it made sense to cancel both. That was World Rowing Cup 1 in April and World Rowing Cup 2 at the start of May. Uh, since then, and in the last couple of days, the um, FISA, which is the, the governing body of rowing, have cancelled World Rowing Cup 3, but they've also cancelled the the Olympic, the final Olympic qualification regatta that's on in Lucerne in May. So basically, this is the last chance for countries to qualify boats for the Olympic Games. And there would touch wood have been Skibreen interest here. Ireland were hoping to send a women's heavyweight four and an Irish women's lightweight double to that Olympic qualification regatta. And Emily Emily Hegarty and, and Natalie Long from Skibreen Rowing Club are in the mix for the women's four. And in the lightweight women's double, you the likes of um, Eva Casey, Denise Walsh, Lydia Heafy, and so on. So there's very much a, a West Cork and Skibbereen interest in that final Olympic qualification to get a, We don't know what's going to happen with this now. Um, first off, we don't know what's going to happen with the Olympics, and we don't know then if the Olympics, let's say, are going ahead, how boats can still qualify for the Olympics. Um, last week, Gary O'Donovan, Paul O'Donovan, uh, Jake McCarthy and Fintan McCarthy, they came home from a two-week training camp in Seville, so they're training away at the National Rowan Centre at the moment. Just an update on the Irish men's lightweight double. It's now down to four. Um, if the Olympic Games are going ahead, it's between Gary, Paul, Fintan and Jake to get in that double. Shane O'Driscoll is not in the mix anymore for that um, um, Irish Olympic double. But again, the great uncertainty, Jack, is we don't know what's going to happen if the Olympics will go ahead. But it, it will have an impact Um on, on our local athletes and um what's your what's your sense i know this is a an impossible question to answer given the times that we're living in but what is your sense of the olympics actually happening in 2020 for my money there's no way it can happen because there's just not enough time to reorganize whatever needs to be reorganized in terms of qualification tournaments etc but just what's your own personal sense of it um, I'm kind of the same sort of thought process as you, Jack. I find it very hard to think that it's going to go ahead um, because there are still places open for athletes to qualify for the Olympics and those tournaments, whether they're table tennis or rowing or athletics, they're not going on right now. So I find if athletes could miss out in the Olympics because of, or they would miss out in the Olympics because of these qualification tournaments not taking place. And I don't think that's fair. Um, 
I think this is a unprecedented event that's happening worldwide. So I know before they were saying that the Olympics can't be pushed into the following year, but they were talking about pushing the Euros into next year. This is unprecedented. So if it is a case of knocking the Tokyo Olympics back into next summer, I think that should be explored because we don't know when this is going to, what's going to happen with um, the coronavirus, when normality will resume. You would think it would be, I don't know, weeks, months, we don't know. Um, this is the new reality that we're facing at the moment. So if they did knock the Olympics even back towards the very tail end of this year or even into next year, um, because it means so much to all the athletes. So again, it's an uncertainty, Jack. We don't know what's happening, but I can't see it going ahead this summer. I just think it's no, not at this moment in time. Well, one Olympic qualifier that has been taking place over the last few days is the boxing qualification tournament over in London. Last week, we spoke to Kill the Matchers, Christina Desmond, who was due to box, and she was in action in the round of 32 yesterday. She said on last week's podcast that the draw was going to be hugely important, and unfortunately, the draw went against her. She drew the second-seeded Italian and was beaten. She put up a good showing, but just on the day, she was beaten by the better girl. So Christina Desmond out of that qualification tournament. There is a backdoor which is another tournament that will be held supposedly in Paris in May. But that's another one where you just have to say France seems to be one of the countries that's been affected more so than a lot of the Western European countries. So it's hard to see that going ahead. But that is one ray of hope for Christina. There is another chance to qualify. The draw went against her on this occasion. She didn't look out of place in the ring with the second seed, but it just wasn't to be. But uh, Kieran, we might leave the coronavirus chat there for now. I'm sure we'll be talking about it every week on the podcast for the foreseeable future so uh, we'll just try and switch to something else and coming up after the break we're going to look ahead to the Southern Star Southwest Coastal Rowing Schools Regatta Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast the only podcast dedicated to all things sport in West Cork Don't forget to pick up this Thursday Southern Star newspaper including our award winning sports section with everything a West Cork sports fan could want in shops across West Cork and online from anywhere in the world via www.southernstar.ie forward slash e-paper The Southern Star and the Star Sport Podcast Number one for sport in West Cork The Southern Star Southwest Coastal Rowing Schools Regatta We'll see a return to Kilkern Lake and take place on Sunday, May 24th. In a few minutes, we're going to hear from Anna O'Sullivan and Tony Mannix, organisers of the regatta. But Kieran, can you maybe just give us a bit of background as to what this is? This is the fourth year of the Southwest Coastal Rowan Schools Regatta, and it's the first year the Southern Star has got involved. So we're delighted to get on board with this. It's a, it's a fabulous event, a great initiative um, set up by the Southwest Coastal Rowan Association four years ago. So basically it offers the chance for primary school kids, mostly in fifth and sixth class, the chance to kind of to to put their dip their toes, pardon the pun, into the world of, of rowing and coastal rowing. So um the local primary schools they team up with their local coastal rowing clubs, they train for five or six weeks before the before the big event itself. And then on the day they get to have, a, it's a fun race. Um, so there's no real winners and losers in this. It's an introduction into um, into coastal rowing for kids. So like I said, it's a great event. Um, covers a huge geographical area from Beira right over to, to, to Kinsale. And there's there's national schools from Dunmanway involved as well. So um, a great event. And like I said, Jack, the Southern Star, we're delighted to get on board with it. Okay then, well, let's hear from the Assistant PRO for Southwest Coast Rowing, Anna O'Sullivan, and the Southwest Rowing Development Officer, Tony Mannix. Here at the Southern Star, we're delighted to be involved in the 2020 Southern Star Southwest Coastal Rowing Schools Regatta that is on Sunday, May 24th at Kilkern Lake in Gallyhead. Um, the Southwest Schools Coastal Rowing Regatta is on the go since 2017 and it's grown in popularity year after year. And like I said, here in the Southern Star, we're delighted to get on board with it this year. And I'm joined here in the Star Studio by Anna O'Sullivan to my left from Court McSherry Rowing Club, who is the Assistant PRO with Southwest Rowing, and also Tony Mannix from Ross Garbury Rowing Club, who is the Southwest Rowing Development Officer. Welcome to the studio. Thanks, Ken. Thanks Ken. I suppose, Anna, I'm going to start with you first. Um, tell us a small bit about the, the, the Southwest Coastal Schools Regatta. Well, as you said um, already there, it was set up in 2017. Um, that was our first 
um, schools uh, regatta. Um, and really it was an initiative to deal with the growing demand um, for rowing, um, which came on foot of the, I suppose, the Olympic, the, um, the um, O'Donovan brothers mm-hmm. and the Tokyo Olympics that were coming up so even this year. So it was to encourage participation, but also to, to deal with that growing demand. And basically what happens at the schools regatta is the teams from um, various primary schools um, race against one another. And it's mainly fifth, sixth class students. They're 10 to 12 years of age. And it's their introduction to rowing. So mm-hmm. it's the first time for many of those that they, that they, they get rowing. Um, many of these go on to join clubs um, and take part in local, um, national uh, regattas. I suppose like this, this, like you said there, it's for primary school mm. kids and it's primary schools um, and a large number of primary schools across West Cork um, uh, take part in this regatta and rowing in West Cork is really strong. Like you mentioned, the O'Donovan Brothers and obviously Skibreen Rowing Club and the River Rowing and kind of it taps into that popularity in rowing. Kind of It's a fantastic initiative and it introduces kids to the sport of coastal rowing. Yes, it, is, it encourages participation and deals with ones that really have taken to it because of the O'Donovan brothers and because of the increase to, due to the uh, to the Olympics in Tokyo this year. And like you mentioned, Anna, kind of it's primary school kids. So how does that relationship work between the clubs and the schools? Well, what happens is um, schools hand out these invitations that um, the South West have made out. Um, so that the invitation goes from the local clubs into the various schools. Mm. So the a club, if the, one club in the area might have two or three schools, so they'll deal with their own schools in their own areas, and then students will have a look at the flyer that goes out, um, the training schedule is on it, um, whatever times they need to be there, what they need to bring with them basically, and the idea is that they get out onto the water and row with their friends as opposed to rowing with their club. They're now rowing with their their school friends. Mm. Bit like the skin of skull that yeah. the, the the footballers, the hurlers have in, in national schools. And it's growing in popularity year after year, like you said, Anna, it's on the go since twenty seventeen and this is twenty twenty now, so it's getting bigger year after year. So for for people listening to this podcast now and even watching it on, online, how can schools or parents get involved if they're interested in taking part in this year's regatta? Well, there are clubs from uh, Kemic Simon, my own club is called McSherry, right down to Castletown Bear. So all you need to do, contact your local club. Once these flyers go, in, go into the schools, contact the local club. There'll be a, a telephone number on all of these flyers. Um, and basically, once once they have a number, once they have a contact in the in the club, once they have a training schedule, they can get going. It's that easy. That easy, yes. Tony, you've been involved in rowing a long time as well. Tell me the benefits yeah. of rowing and being, being involved in this well, you know the benefits of rowing, really. I suppose are are the um, are the you know it's a pretty much a total body workout. The physical benefits, mm-hmm. um, social benefits to kids at that age, you know. Um, so it's basically um, a total body workout. The exercise nearly almost every muscle in your body. Um, low impact sport, mm-hmm. non contact, which you know is attractive to a lot of parents. You know you're not there's very little injury involved in it. And um, socially, you know, it, it's fantastic for the kids. It's our local regattas, you know, it's our West Cork. You know, the, the, a lot of the kids know each other from different competitions in different uh, sports anywhere. Mm-hmm. So the regattas are very social outings uh, for family, friends, and, you know, it, it, they're great They're great outings, you know. It ticks so many boxes like yeah, that. It, it kind yeah. of, especially with these kids in primary school, it just keeps them active, it gets them out, especially now it's coming into the springtime, the evenings are getting longer, and what better sport to be involved in? Absolutely. You know, um, what makes a good roar so, Tony? Kind of, we've talked about the benefits of it, kind of, what makes a good roar? Well, I suppose, it, look, it takes time, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, like every other sport, it takes time, mm-hmm. a lot of dedication, uh, teamwork, rowing you know it has that little extra thing you you know it's, it's not the easy sport but it's a tougher sport maybe a toughish sport physically um so it takes that little inner bit of inner drive as well you know um of course the basics of it are many many miles and hours on the machines and the water of the sea training 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 over years so that you know that's it, it, it builds up over time eventually you you know you get that um, muscle memory where everything comes together balance technique rhythm and then that's you know they're pretty much there at that stage but you know they're going to perfect it for the rest of their lives anyway you know 
And Coast to Rhone, it's getting more and more popular. Like we mentioned, the O'Donovan brothers, Gary and Paul, that was back in 2016 when they won the Olympic silver, and that was on the river. But Coast to Rhone is really taking off, and this taps into that kind of popularity as well. So how, how easy is it for, for people to get involved in Coast to Rhone here in West Cork? Well, I suppose since the introduction of the schools regatta, you know, it's it's been easier again for because it's gone out to the schools. The people that would probably never have thought about even taking part in an event like this maybe will get involved in it. Um, Southern Star on board this year, which is fantastic, um, is going to give it more exposure. So that, that's going to really help it grow. Um, plus, you know, the, the kids are coming out, they're taking part in the regatta with their friends. Um, firstly and then obviously if they like it, it might be the spark that they needed they like it they go to their local club they you know they, they, they get involved and they become members and, and they take it from there you know clubs are very welcoming in West Cork you know all the clubs there and you know it's not just for kids mm-hmm. adults and you'll find a lot of adults get involved in through their kids rather than the other way around you know that's almost the beauty of Coastal Rowan, Tony. Like you said, it's from all ages. From, from all ages. We're talking about the, the schools we're getting now that's on in May. But it goes right up to the veteran class. You know, Absolutely. this is a this sport, like you, you, can, you can be up to Masters, you can be a kid right mm-hmm. up to the to, to the upper end of oh, the scale, uh, which is... Absolutely, yeah. Lifetime, you know, lifetime of rowing if you want it. It's mm-hmm. there in front of you, you know. It's absolutely brilliant. So, again, this is coming up, the, the Southern Star, Southwest... Coastal Rowan Schools Regatta is on Sunday, May 24th. And again, Anna, for those listening and they want to get involved and find out how they can get involved in this, what's the best way to do that? Well, as we say, the fires will go into the schools um, in the next few days. Um, and once they have the, the flyers that go into the school from the, from the southwest, we'll have telephone numbers, contact numbers of the um, of the people that are going to run this for the, for the clubs. Um, so... Once they have a contact number and a contact person, they can get a contact with those. Mm. Um, and the training schedule is on it, and it's literally get it's down to the get down to the beach, get down mm. to the water, get into the boat, and get going. It, it, it really is that easy. Yeah. And just to explain again, so it's the kids from their local school will get involved with their local club, and yeah. they'll train with their local club. They represent yes. their school on the day of yeah. the regatta. So and we'll you know. go in club colours. Or they're, club sorry, colours. not club colours. They'll be in their school colours. We've all yeah. in the club colours. And the day itself, I presume, that's just the fierce excitement there. You have kids rowing there. It's it's colour, it's laughs, it's just yeah. shrieks yeah. of well, last, joy and hollers. And last year we had over 200 kids. Wow. Um, course add in their parents the grandparents yeah. the sisters brothers so you know it's a, it's a big event huge excitement growing yeah. every year it, um, it is their all ireland isn't it and kind of it's, yeah. you know kind of it's fierce excitement and it's a great reward for at the end of their, of their training program that they get this big day out absolutely. and they are the heroes they are the, everyone's there to watch them it's an achievement based event really is mm. you know there's no races such well they're competing but it's an achievement based event you know They'll only be at it a short length of time, maybe six or, six or eight weeks, mm-hmm. and just basically dipping their toe in the water, figuratively speaking. Um, so that's you know they, that's the way they get involved, and and that's you know it's, it's, it is a great event, you know. Absolutely brilliant! I already cannot wait for Sunday, May twenty fourth. Like I said, it's the Southern Star Southwest Coastal Rowan Schools Regatta. Um, check out this week's Southern Star for more details. Tony and Anna, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to all things sport in West Cork. Don't forget to pick up this Thursday's Southern Star newspaper, including our award-winning sports section with everything a West Cork sports fan could want. In shops across West Cork and online from anywhere in the world via www.southernstar.ie forward slash e-paper. The Southern Star and the Star Sport Podcast. Number one for sport in West Cork. On February 12th, just gone, UCC lifted the Fitzgibbon Cup for the 40th time with an 18 points to 211 win over Carlo IT. Clonakilty's David Lowney lined out at cornerback for the Cork side in a cracker of a game, which saw 14 man UCC come back from six points down to claim back to back titles. Kieran, you caught up with David last week. How was he? David is in good form. Um, it was the first monthly award presentation of the 2020 West Cork Sports Star Awards. And it was rather fitting that David Lowney picked up this award because if you go back five years, David Lowney was crowned the 2015 West Cork Youth Sports Star Award. So we're always delighted in the awards to see one of our, our former youth winners kind of keep showing that talent and progressing up through the ranks. And um, it was fantastic for 
for David to win his first monthly award. Um, David played every minute of every game at UCC, won the Fitzgibbon Cup, like you said there, Jack. So, um, and he's still a dual player. When David was honoured five years ago, it's because he was a Cork minor footballer and um, hurler. And for West Cork to have a dual player, it's great because I suppose hurling has been the poor relation, well, it's seen as a poor relation in West Cork for, for too long now. And um, David and the likes of Luke Mead and so on, they're doing their very best to show that there are really, really good hurlers here in West Cork, which there are. So David was honoured for his hurling exploits and I caught up with him at the awards and this is what he had to say. Um, David, back in the Celtic Grass, five years on after you won the West Cork Youth Sports Star Award, you've now been honoured with uh, the first monthly award of 2020 for your role in UCC's Fitzgibbon Cup success. Um, just take us back to the final against IT Carlo. They hit the ground running when they got a good few points up. What was going through your mind? Yeah, well, they hit the ground running. There's no doubt about that. They scored two goals in the first was at 10 or 15 minutes. And they really caused it to happen. It's kind of one thing we were expecting. They've got a massive forward line of especially Liam Blanchfield inside there, kind of seen a hurler, we kind of knew that they targeted the high balls in, but so we didn't really deal with it very well, but you know, it's all about coming back from those big upsets and the calibre of players we have, they're well, well trained, they're well tuned in psychologically to deal with that, so we bounced back and we got back eventually. It ended up being a fantastic win, and that was kind of back-to-back Fitzgibbon Cup. Um, a, a quote you said after, I think your manager said, good teams win at once, but kind of great teams back it up. Yeah, yeah, so Tom Kingston kept kind of I uh, mentioned that as the year on Dan, he was kind of saying how complacency was kind of kicking in with us in, in terms of league games, we were kind of winning league games by five big margins and then the first few rounds we were winning the first few rounds handy enough and taking handy enough so um, he was kind of putting more I suppose pressure on us to perform mm-hmm. because we knew that if we did win it would be something huge and third level colleges is, I was just saying earlier to JP, it's actually very similar to senior to county hurling with the calibre players that are playing so it is a good recognised competition so to win it twice was really astonishing yeah and to play every minute of every game on a personal level for you you must be delighted with that yeah delighted yeah basically just staying injury free is the main thing is staying healthy so that was kind of one of my goals to start the year and I'm happy I achieved that we're not too far off now the county championship starting you're turning your mind back to football uh, Clan of Kilty what are your, your hopes for, for the new championships too coming up yeah so new year new beginnings as I say it's about four weeks right now we're playing Carrigal Line um, training's going well yeah we've um all heads are down, all focus, and now we four lads now in the, the senior football panel with Cork. Mm-hmm. You see young Irish family playing full back there recently for them, which is brilliant. Irish coming up through, through the ranks from one of twenties last year, so we have these young lads driving us on, which is great. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a great competition team, so I'm really looking forward to it. And kind of get divided the West Cork group of date. We did, yeah, indeed, <laughs> yeah. Thank God, it's as you it was in senior A now, though every camp, every team is is really of, of a high caliber, so. I wouldn't take too much notice of that, really. Is there a fierce excitement this year, the fact it is a new kind of championship format and we've group stages and the top two events and so on? What's it like preparing for that, knowing that you've a guaranteed three games? Yeah, you just said it there. You know you've a guaranteed three games is, is really good, Like especially for the older lads that have kids and stuff. They can actually plan their holidays. So I would say the first round is in is in April. Then for two or three weeks after, you might get a break and they can head away or something or you know, head away for a weekend. So... It's just that planning aspect now that life's come busier for everyone. I think it's really, really good. It's going to benefit everyone. And Clannock Kilty, you have a couple of new players this year. I see it's Darrow O'Shea and Joe Grimes. We from... do, yeah. We have Joe Grimes from the Stoll Emmets and Darrow O'Shea from the Grail Clock. Mm-hmm. Two guards that are in Clann now a year. So we're delighted to have them. Yeah, two outstanding footballers and two top lads. So it's a great addition. And do they play in, in the midfield forwards, are they? Um, yeah, well, it depends really. If we played how many league games now? But three or four league games and they've moved around. But they're generally around the middle third, yeah. Rewind back to last summer, you spent it in, in America, you, you, had a, you had a nice time over there, a good break, I suppose. Was it nice to get away for, for the summer because that's not something that a lot of, I suppose, club players or county players get the chance to do? Yeah, very few do actually. Yeah, I have an aunt in New York, so I kind of, I was up and down to from Boston to New York all the summer and it's something I really, really enjoyed. I know there's more lads now, like Mark White from Clan is going to San Fran this summer playing football himself. Just taking that year out and I suppose doing a small bit of travelling too, it really opens up your eyes to bigger and better things that are out there and yeah it's a good, good break so if, if people get the opportunity to, to kind of head away for three or four months for the summer it's something that you'd, you'd encourage them to do just go go see a bit of the world oh definitely yeah even if it's not for three months even just for a month or two it's plenty of time like a month is probably loads and as I say with the new form of the championship you could easily head away after college for the month of June and come back in July or August and be fresh out so yeah we've talked about club level county level what are your, your hopes and aspirations you are with the seniors for, for a bit what's happening there now yeah I was training away at the seniors all winter like um was the league campaign didn't go great, mm-hmm. um, so there's about what 
eight, nine weeks to a championship, which isn't ideal, but um, yeah, to put the head down now and train away, I suppose. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to all things sport in West Cork. Don't forget to pick up this Thursday Southern Star newspaper, including our award-winning sports section with everything a West Cork sports fan could want. In shops across West Cork and online from anywhere in the world via www.southernstar.ie forward slash e-paper. The Southern Star and the Star Sport Podcast, number one for sport in West Cork. Welcome back to the Star Sport Podcast. And before we wrap up this week's show, Kieran's going to give us a quick run through of what's coming up in this week's sports section. But Kieran, I have to ask, there is no live sport on. So what are you going to fill? Are you going to fill it with tales of your own sporting exploits from your? Do you want me to write a column on the day I won a minor Ryan C County Championship medal? Because I, I, I'm willing to do it. I would probably need to call on that check in the next couple of weeks, depending on how long this um, this uh, this lack of sport goes on. But the show does go on. We have a, a, another packed sports section for all our readers this week, and there's plenty in there. I actually caught up earlier with Alan Sheehan from Dunmanway, um, former Donny footballer, the former Dunmanway town soccer player. He's down in Melbourne now the last six years, and himself and four more Donny, Donny players were on the Gary Owen team that enjoyed big su- success at the Podrick Pierce's Sevens Tournament in Melbourne recently. So um, good to catch up with Alan. And as is everything at the moment, Jack, kind of the conversation was meant to be about GA, but you could not escape the coronavirus and uh, I suppose the effect of COVID-19 because our chat kept coming back to this. Um, Alan's down there six years and he was telling me, Australia, it's not as bad at the moment. But he goes, you can feel the panic. He goes, you can see it in the shops. You can see the sport is, is, is starting to kind of shut down over and so on. But it's, it's a good chat and a good interview with, with Alan Sheehan in this week's Southern Star. Alan's brother, of course, is Gavin Sheehan, who had great success at Cheltenham last week. So we have a couple of words with Gavin in this week's Southern Star as well. Lots, lots of good content in there. Lots of great reading. Um, interviews with Phil Healy, with David Lowney. We have an assessment of the car curlers at this stage of the league. Great story actually from Tom Lyons about the time Newcastle. It's, it's a timely story too, Jack. About the time Newcastle won the ninety. 19- the final was played in March nineteen sixty eight. There was such a long gap be- between the semi final and the final because of the foot and mouth scare at the time. So it's kind of apt around now because we don't know when the GA season will get back on track. So it's a good piece by Tom Lyons. Great piece by John McCarthy and the Bentley Bay Rovers women's team. That had great success um, in the Sevens League recently. Good news too that there is a professional kickboxing fight coming to West Cork in August. I caught up with world kickboxing champion Tony Stevenson for all the details on this and this check will be a great event in, in August. It'll be the first professional kickboxing event of its type in, in West Cork and I don't know how many professional sports events have, have been held in West Cork before so It'll either be in Skibbereen or Bentry. Um, Tony will be fighting for a professional world title. There'll be money on the line. It's an actual vacant world title. It'll be over seven rounds. It's a fierce, interesting read again with Tony Stevenson. So as you can see, there's still a lot going on in West Cork sport. And over the next couple of weeks, Jack, and however long this um, this kind of, I suppose, lack of sport and this kind of um, postponement of sport goes on, we will bring you all the best local stories. So... If, you, if our readers and listeners out there have a story that they want us to chase up, just, just drop us a line. Um, sport at southernstar.ie is our email. So get in touch. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And it's just important to let people know that the Southern Star Sports section will be here this week and next week. And we'll keep doing what we're doing, which is informing the West Cork public of what's going on in West Cork sport. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to second that statement from Kieran there. But anyway, thanks for listening to the Star Sport podcast this week. We'll be back at the same time next week. And if you enjoy these shows, please make sure to rate, review and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Acast, Stitcher or wherever else you listen to the show.